Today's technical lesson for you automotive enthusiasts is off-road and motorcycle carburetors. I'll explain to you how they work. There's probably a few things you'll learn. This one's pretty typical. It's like almost all of them. It happens to be a Makuni. There's the air input side and that's the part that attaches to the motor. This shiny round cylinder in the middle is like the throttle piston. The cable goes in that hole when you pull the throttle or twist the handle or whatever you do. It lifts that piston up. When that piston lifts up, there's a long needle attached to it that goes inside the bowl of the carburetor, a tapered needle. So as it's lifting up, you can get more and more fuel out of the main venturi. So, now I've lifted it up part way and you can see that needle. It just hangs there loosely. It's held on by a C-clip up in here underneath the spring. If you do a major jet size change, you should do a needle change to match the jet. If you're just changing a couple sizes, just leave your needle in there under most circumstances. On this carburetor, it has one of the most common types of choke. I call it the bypass system choke. When you pull this lever, it lifts up a little tiny brass piston in this little cylinder. The other kind of choke is like, like the flapper valve choke, like a throttle plate. It's a shaft that goes through here on a lever and a throttle plate type device just opens and closes to choke out the system. So I'll show you how this kind of choke system works. Air comes in that little hole, travels through that passageway, and goes up to this little piston. The piston acts like a valve. And then another hole is drilled through here, capped here, and goes to a suction tube or a pickup tube inside the bowl. So there's that tube down this hole and that hole is vented to the bottom so it's just always fuel sitting in that hole. So how this system works is when the throttle is completely closed, you mean not touching the throttle, the engine really can't suck much air in through here. But since this is I call the bypass system, when you pull that piston up, it allows air to run the engine to get sucked through here and come out that hole that you see there all, all the while while picking up the same time some fuel from the bowl. So that's how that choke works. That choke is completely ineffective if you have the throttle on a little bit while you're trying to start your engine. Then it's just sucking air through the main venturi and no fuel air mixture through that hole. So that's how you start these engines. The engines that use the choke plate method actually start a little better usually with some throttle on because then there's more air being allowed to be sucked through the carburetor and that means then more fuel can be sucked out. Now we're looking at the underside of the carburetor that the float bowl tank is removed and the thing that's always in the middle is called the main jet. It has a number on it and most often the bigger the number, at least on off-road machines, the bigger the jet. You can tell by the fact that this has a tiny hole that it probably came off a four-stroke machine. The little brass cup around the jet is actually called a, winding, a windage baffler. It just sort of puts a cup around the jet while it's in the fuel tank or the reservoir so that splashing and sloshing doesn't change the amount of fuel going up the jet. These jets just unscrew. They're never very tight. And inside that hole, of course, is that needle I just showed you. These jets cost anywhere from three to five bucks. If you've just had some fun with your machine and modified the exhaust, you know, taken off the muffler, or done something to it to make it louder and possibly faster, the first thing you might notice is all of a sudden your machine has lost power. Well, why? Isn't more less exhaust back pressure better? Well, it is. But it's just become too lean, so this could burn out your valves and be harmful to your engine. So there is a redneck way if you don't have any jets handy to change. You just get one of these jets, most of them are made of brass, just use the one that was already in it, and get just a diaper pin or ordinary sewing pin, something like that, and put it on your ordinary grinder, grind a little wedge on it instead of a point. When it has a wedge, it looks like a chisel. You don't even need to remove the jet. It's actually easier when it's still attached, but the carburetor should be off to do this, or at least twisted sideways on your bike or whatever, so you can get access to it. 
Well, this pin doesn't have the chisel ground on it yet, but just pretend it did. So what you do is you stick it in the hole and press on an angle hard against the sides of the hole, and that scratches the hole, puts lots of scratches. Well, that increases your fuel flow just a little bit. So this is a trial and error thing. You know, you might put six, seven scratches on it by pushing hard, then put your bowl back on, twist your carburetor straight again, because you can leave all the cables connected, just twist it sideways, and then go for a rip. If you're still popping and backfiring and misfiring, well, scratch it out some more. Once you think you got it scratched out and your bike's running great, well then it's good to take it for a hard ride, then shut it off right away and look at the spark plug. The spark plug's tip should be sort of tan color. If it's still kind of white, you still need more fuel. More fuel never hurts your motor, less fuel does. Now all carburetors have floats, and that's those black things. These ones have the foam neoprene ones. Very old machines that have fuel sitting in them for a long time, like even cars, they get slightly gas logged or soaked up with, you know, fuel and they become a little heavier and your float level becomes wrong and your machine runs a little bit too rich. So it's kind of hard to tell if they are or they aren't. If you think your machine's running too rich, you can adjust this little tab with a flat screwdriver that controls the needle and seat that's underneath of it. The rule of thumb for setting floats is you set them completely level with the base of the carburetor. For example, like these two levers would be parallel. Now that I've removed that lever, that's the needle. All carburetors have a needle. Some have a rubber tip. Off-road machines have a spring in their tip. That's because those floats are bouncing around so much on off-road bumps that they're causing your carburetor bowl to overfill with fuel then choking your machine out with too much fuel. So it's just like a little shock absorber that absorbs those bumps. It's very common to see fuel leaking out of your machine once you've stopped and parked it and then sometimes it's very hard to start because it's flooded. Well, sometimes these floats stick, sometimes the needle sticks. So the most common solution is just take the handle of a screwdriver, whack it a few times and see what happens. The other thing that sometimes happens is the tiniest fiber, like the even, a fiber that even can come off the filter of your fuel filter, can get caught on the edge of that needle and cause it to leak a little bit, and then your bike just keeps dripping while it's parked, because of course it doesn't have a fuel pump, it's gravity flow. Then you got to take this lever off, take this out, and blow air through your fuel line, then it comes out there, carefully clean this or blow it off and put it back together. On this style of carburetor the idle speed screw is always on the side. This one happens to be preset, it has a little blocker so you can't adjust it. Since I've already explained the main mixture, this is your driving jet, now we have idle mixture. That's the screw there that meters exactly how much fuel is running when the throttle's closed. On the part of the carburetor that attaches to the engine is the narrowest spot where the engine can just get enough air to run. There's little tiny holes and slits there where the fuel comes out for idle mixture. No fuel is going through here through the main jet when the engine is idling at or at lower RPMs or the throttle isn't open that much. So the way you set this is set your engine at an idle speed that seems to be okay whether you have to do that by holding the throttle or turning this adjustment screw and then turn this screw to the engine runs the fastest. Once it runs the fastest, then readjust your idle speed screw back to whatever idle speed you want it to run at, and then it's set. And do this when the engine's warmed up, definitely not cold. There is no adjustment like there is on small engines like that are on lawnmowers and, you know, garden equipment. Those machines have a screw very often on the bottom of their bowl that you can adjust the mixture but all more sophisticated carburetors do not have that. On most street bikes they have another banana shaped port up here and a vacuum chamber head up here. This part looks the same but that's not controlled by the throttle cable. Those carburetors have a throttle plate here like any conventional carburetor and another lever arm that the throttle cable controls. Those carburetors are called constant velocity carburetors. 
they're a very precision way to adjust the fuel mixture and have the engine be able to rev quickly without ever gasping for air or bogging when you rev it quickly. I'll show you how they work. Well, the most important thing is those carburetors will not run right without that rubber snorkel tube on them. They need that to direct the air to go, that rams into that banana port. The air that goes in that banana port then goes through a chamber, runs up along the side here, and pushes on that diaphragm bellows and lifts it up. When it lifts up, it lifts up this piston, lifts up the needle, then allows more fuel. It happens when it wants to, not at the speed that you crack the throttle plate. If you don't have your airbox system hooked up, then air randomly comes in in different directions instead of in a laminar direction, and not enough gets rammed in that banana port, and the plunger won't lift up and you can't get the bike to rev, and you wondered why it revved fine before. <laughs> They're different than all other carburetors, that's important. On most of these off-road carburetors, they have a big nut in the bottom of the bowl. That's for a quick jet change. Just put a ratchet on socket on there or a wrench. Loosen the clamps on the rubber snorkel tubes. Twist your carb sideways, sideways on your machine if it's possible. And then you can easily stick just a little nut driver tool in there and pull your jet out and change it right on the scene. You know, you don't have to take everything apart and go back to the shop. Very simple. One more thing, almost all of these carbs have a little flat or Phillips screw head sticking out the bottom of them with a spring on it or in a hole. That's your bowl drain. Anytime your machine sat for more than six weeks to two months, if you want it to start quickly, shut your fuel off on your tank, loosen the bowl drain, let the ounce, of, ounce or so of fuel that's in there run out and bleed out on the ground, turn your fuel valve back on, and let it refill. If you have a street bike that says prime, you have to actually let the fuel flow on prime position, not run. No fuel will flow on run because prime position bypasses the vacuum shutoff that causes fuel only to flow on run when the engine's running. On this particular carb, it doesn't have that drain screw, so you have to take off this nut to do that. So, I think that sums it all up. All you need to know 